when the price of gas goes up, the price of material goes up because they got to transport it. It takes petroleum to make this plastic pipe. So we always get these neat little things in the mail, you know. Everything is uh, going to be increased 5%. But then when gas prices drop back down, my prices stay up. You know, they, they never seem to adjust our prices, you know. See these things up here on the board? Anybody have a clue what that is? What any of this means? The type of... Huh? The type of pipes? Yep. It's the type of pipes. That's materials the pipes are made out of. So, basically, when we start out with ABS, and if you think I can sit here and quote you what everything on there is, you're absolutely crazy. <laughs> because I can tell you what the codes are, but I'm going to actually read the word to you. Acronochilla butadin styrene. ABS. Pretty much, it's a smooth inner surface. It has a superior resistance. That's why they use it for drain, waste, and vent pipe. So, um, it's been proven to use from 40 below to 160 degrees. Now, if you got water over 160 degrees going through there, then you got some serious issues going on in your house. Um, household chemicals. There's not much that can hurt it. Uh, if you ever notice, drain cleaner comes in a plastic bottle. There's a reason for it because drain cleaner get, caustic acid won't hurt plastic. So that's why your pipes are plastic. Put caustic acid in a cast iron pipe and it'll heat it out. That's why all these lawsuits are out there now. PVC. That's the most common pipe that you're going to probably hear about um, when you're working on a job. Realistically, drain pipes are called ABS pipe, even though they call them PVC. PVC is called, I can't see it, polyvinyl chloride. It's been used for over 30 years. It's chemical resistant. The reason they use this is because of the strength. 2,000 PSI is what the tension strength is on that pipe, so you can use it for water piping. However, it's not allowed inside a dwelling. You can use it for all your pipe work outside, all your water pressure pipe in the ground, but you can't bring it inside the building. And there's reasons for it. Why can't you put it in a building? Because if it burns, it uh, makes a poisonous... That's right. Uh, you remember what I said. PVC burns, it'll kill you in 15 seconds, just from the fumes. There's a firefighter asking. <laughs> what kills people in fires? Smoke. Smoke. <clears throat> Chemicals, things that burn. CPVC, chlorinated polyvinyl chloride. Fancy word for water pipe. This is what we use for potable water supply. That you can use inside a house, hot or cold pipe. The word potable means drinkable. Um, it means you can use it in the house. The best way to remember it is, is if you put water in a pot and boil it and you cook, it's potable. That's why they call it potable water. So anytime you see something that says potable water, supposedly it's safe to drink. Not all the time, but especially if it's Hudson water giving you your water, it'd probably give you a case of the drops anyway. Um, temperature rating on it, if I'm not mistaken on that one, I don't know if they put it in here or not. See, I know it has 2,000 PSI, pounds per square inch, and it has a period of shelf life of 30 years. Uh, I disagree with that because in 10 years it becomes very brittle and you can hit it with something and it'll just fall apart. So, uh, there is a uh, one thing that will destroy any plastic piping before it's time and you just walked in on it. Sun. That's right, the sun. UV. Just like your eyeballs. If you don't protect your eyeballs, next thing you know, you're walking around with white film all over your face. But um, you got to protect the pipe whether you paint it, put insulation on it, it don't matter as long as you put something over the pipe when it's outside. People have all their 
sprinkler lines up out of the ground and stuff like that where they connect and you go by and you hit it with the reed whacker and it just falls apart because they never protected it and the UV rays from the sun just makes it so brittle it just falls apart. The next one, chances of you using this are probably slim to none. It's polyfutyl fluorine ethylene. This is chemical pipe. This is what's used in hospitals, emergency rooms, mortuaries, places to where they use nasty, 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 nasty chemicals, human waste, stuff like that. It's a self-lubricating compound. It has a rating of minus 200 degrees to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So, it's about $20 a foot. It's very expensive piping. So the only time it's used is, like I said, is is in medical scenarios, or you know, like in a mortuary where they use bombing fluids and stuff like that. So, FPM. God, I don't know what they call these words. It's a fluorocarbon. Basically, it's also very extensive chemical compatibility. The temperature range on it, but this is not glue. This is used with pressure fittings with valves and o-rings. Something that you'll never have to worry about. Have you ever seen that big green pipe out on the side of the road? You know, big big stacks of it? Yeah. Water mains. That's what that is. The pipe's not good. It's put together with a mechanical coupling. Or what they call a mega lug. That's what that material is made of. It's real thick, very durable. However, leave that out there for six months. You might just throw it away because once that pipe loses its shine, it's lost its viscosity and it's, it can be very brittle. So, there again, we talk about the good old UV rays. The EPDM is terapolymy elastomer made from ethanol, polypropylene, and denine monomer. It's a good abrasion, tear resistance, offers excellent chemical resistance to various acids and alkalines. It's susceptible to attack by hydrocarbons. It is not rec recommended for applications involving petroleum, oil, strong acids, or strong alkalides. So, nobody uses it. <laughs> you know, it's just a type of pipe, but really nobody ever uses it because it's every application you put it in, you're going to run up against the stuff. Why they invented it, I don't know. I don't think I've ever used a piece of it in my life. So, in the real world, that's all you worry about. Unless you get in the plumbing field and you've been doing this a long time and you get into medical facilities to where you're going to be running certain drains, which a lot of drains in medical facilities now are out of stainless steel, which means there's welding involved. So. These are your three mains. These two, potable. This one, hot or cold. Cold only. That right there drains. Nothing else. Nothing else. They make a two inch pipe. It's ABS. It's called foam core. And some plumbers are hard headed and they use it for water mains. Well, in about six years, you'll be digging it up and replacing it because it's going to blow up. Because it doesn't have, it's called foam core for a reason. It's not solid pipe, it has a foam core. Outside layer of plastic, foam in the center, inside layer of plastic. That's made for drain pipe only. So there's a difference between ABS and PVC, because ABS will be foam core, PVC will be solid poly vinyl pipe. But a lot of guys, when they're running two inch pipe, they don't look. Very distinctive mark. If it's got black writing on it, it's foam core. If it's got red writing on it, it's high pressure pipe. Now you can use PVC for drains. The price isn't really much different. You know, 
So if I got a 20 foot stick of PVC and I need to run a vent, I'm going to use it. I'm not going to run down and get a piece of ABS. You know. But you run a force main with ABS instead of PVC, he will. He'll get you. So. Once you go, here's your house. Out uh, here is your is the driveway. Down here is your water meter. Okay? You run from the water meter up to the house and down in the ground. Then it comes up in the house and goes in and feeds the house. There's a valve usually right here. This point right here can't go any farther with plastic. You can go with CPVC or copper. But you can't write you can't run PVC in a house. And again, again, we're talking about brittleness, fire, things like that. So once you go inside that house, you come in, all your pipe in here will be CPVC, Upanor, copper, or PEX. Um, you don't see many houses in copper. For one thing, the cost of it. You know, it used to be 20 years ago, you could run copper in a house. You put it in the ground. It's roll copper because you can't put a solder joint underground. So it has to be roll copper. It comes up, you put your manifold. You know, everybody know what a manifold is? Of course you don't. I'm going to show you. Here's your roll of copper. Okay, you unroll it, you go into the house, you bring it up through the slab. There's no joints, it's copper all the way. Well here you'll start over again with another piece and go over to the next room and you bring it back up. All right, well there's gotta be a connection on these two, but this is above the slab. So you can put a T here, connect it and take this up to your fixture. <coughs> That's above the ground, you can solder. No soldering underground, no joints. So, the reason they don't do this is because you run out there, you roll your copper out, you put it in the ground, you all, get all your manifolds set up, you come back the next day and it's all gone. Because <laughs> somebody stole it. <laughs> So after about ten thousand dollars worth of copper being stolen, we just finally decided that you know copper's probably not a good thing. They used to hire security guards to set in these houses until the doors collapsed. That's how bad it got. Yeah, it was it was bad. You could, you could put a ground rough in, and if you didn't have a guy out there with a gun, it was gone. You know, take a roll of copper down here and sell it at at, at one of these scrap dealers, and you're probably going to go to jail. So, um, PVC, you can have all you want. Who cares? CPVC, a little more expensive, you know, but $5,000 worth of copper to do an average two bath house is what it would cost right now. CPVC is about 300 bucks. That's why we don't use copper. Copper a lot less than CPVC. It's done right now. Anytime you bring copper, say this is your slab, it has a sleeve on it. It protrudes down just like that. You sleeve the copper when it comes through the concrete, because so concrete is very acidic and it can eat copper. So, and you'll see that because you're going to do some commercial. If you're working with a plumber on a commercial job, they're going to use copper. Most of your commercial jobs still use copper. Don't ask me why, but they do. You know, I did a Macy's store over in uh, New Tampa, and just the copper alone in that store was $127,000 for the cost. And that was four inch water mains that ran all the way around the whole place, and then you had tees on it that branched off to everything. Tropicana Field, right at Thirteen million dollars in copper in that in that building. 
It's crazy. Another thing you find Trump can't feel that most of the drains that are in that building are cast iron. That was on a landfill site. Huh? Hazardous materials, I had a pull out of Tropicana Field to put that in. Well, what we did, you know, when we did the Batter's Eye restaurant out there, it's all cast iron. Wow. Because it's all Morgan Morgan. in the air. You're on a 60 foot lift, drilling in pylons, hanging four inch cast iron. So if there was a fire, PVC burns, creates a hazard. So mostly everything in there is cast iron. Because you can't afford to do it in the copper. They have copper drains now back in the day. Some of these old houses here in Spring Hill, they're copper drains. You know, it's what they call DWV copper. It's real thin and they actually have fittings and they ran copper for drains. So that was even before my time. Around Mark's time. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, yeah, that's back when they used to hollow out wood trees and make grain lines. <laughs> copper, <laughs> so <right>. copper gutters. <laughs> those are our different types. Now we worked with all, all three of those messed around with them at the shop. Messed around with the ABS, you messed around with the PVC, and you messed around with some CPVC. And of course, you messed around with the copper, some of you soldered, and you got monkey balls, and you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> so, you know what a monkey ball is? You know what monkey balls are? Is that what you call the slide that comes off the yeah, side of it? Yeah, yeah. We don't leave monkey balls on our copper work. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of the things that I want to work on is what you got in these sheets right here. Pull your one out that's got the numbers on it. You got the right one. There it is. Look at that paper for a few minutes. Well, I show you that I am not an artist. There's a number system. And there's a reason for it. So when you go in a supply house and you order a fitting, they know what the hell you're talking about. That's a T, sanitary T, okay? It has a sweep, okay, runs like that. So water comes in, goes down. What are those numbers for? That's the definition of the outlet. Number one is your outlet, number two is your inlet, number three is your slide. So if I went in and I said, give me a three inch test tee, and I want, and I want a one, one, two, three, that just means it's a three inch test tee. It's nothing different. It just identifies all three areas as three inch. Now look at Let's find a reducer on here. Put me one on here. Let's say you got one with four. For instance, that one in the corner. So you got one outlet, two inlet, three to the left, four to the right. Those are your identifications. So let's say, for instance, you wanted a double Y, three by two. That means three and four would be two inch, two and one would be three inch. That's how you identify your fitting when you're trying to get it from, from the counter. You tell the guy, well, listen, one and two need to be three, three and four need to be two inch. It's two by three double Y. But some people are analytic and they want to know what number, what number it is. I go in there and say, listen, I want a two by three double Y. And if you give me a three inch double Y, I'm gonna throw it at you. But, you know, some people want, to, want numbers. Now there's one on here that's got five. 
You see that fit and it says one, two, three, four, five? You will never use that fitting in the state of Florida because it's against every code. You cannot have a side outlet on a fitting coming into the side. It either has to be a sanitary T, has to be a double Y, or a combo. You cannot. In other words, you can't have a T with a two inch fitting in the side. For instance, having a sink dump into the three inch fitting to drain on a drain that's below a toilet. It's against code. It has to be on a Y after the toilet. So, that fitting you can just scratch out. Because you'll never use it, you'll never see it. Anything that has a port on the side, you'll never use. I got a whole box of them at the shop. I should have brought one. <laughs> oh, you say you had two pieces together to make that happen? Yeah. Well, you catch it catch down line. <coughs> you know, so. Let's say, for instance, Here's the drain line coming right through here. Okay? Over here, we're going to come up. We got a toilet. Let's say we got a sink over here. You want to hook up. Here's where you're going to put your Y. You're going to come up. The sink's going to come down. Trap. And go in just like that. That's the way you got to hook it up by code. So. Here's your toilet, here's your sink, trap, there's a Y right here, and it ties in, and this right here can be a studer vent, or it goes in the wall, up through the roof, VTR. Now, anything that's within eight feet of that vent, you don't have to vent. So, most bathrooms aren't eight foot wide. So, you run your water closet. You know what a water closet is, right? It's a toilet. Just a fancy word. Water closet, sink, over here. Shower, tub. And the only vent you need is the one that comes up. Now, that vent has a T on it, it comes over, it catches the sink. And then this turns and goes down, catches that main line. That area right there is very important when you're plumbing. It's called a wash area. That's, in other words, when you run the sink, water goes past that elbow and washes that elbow. So, if you have a drain line like this, let's say, you put a Y on it, you run it straight up through the roof and there's nothing attached to it, you're going to fail. That's a dry vent. There's nothing to wash that vent. There has to be something attached to it, whether it be a sink or something. Because it has to wash that 90. There are states that allow dry vents. Kentucky's one of them. Uh, particularly, I don't like dry vents because critters love to crawl into dry vents. And snakes, and squirrels, whatever else have you. They don't like water, so they don't crawl down in there because water's running. They hear water running and they don't get out of vent. Uh, debris. People put screens over their vents. I don't do that. It plugs up. No, nothing in the house works because it's going to air lock. Remember, I told you about taking a straw, put it in the drink, put your finger on it, let the straw out. Where's the drink stay? In the straw. Take your finger off the straw. What happens? The water comes out. Same thing on a on a plumbing system. If it can't breathe, it can't drain. Used to be 
you had to have a three inch vent on a house. One. Not anymore. Now you can go up with a two inch vent. It was stupid, you know. Do you know, do you know the reason why they said you had to have a three inch vent? And anything above North Carolina has to have a four inch vent. You know why? What's it do up north that it doesn't do here? Snow. Snows. Snow. Freezes. Guess what? Freezing snow will plug up a vent. So if you have a four inch vent, chances of it plugging up are not as easy as it is if you had a two inch vent. And you plug it up with snow and, and ice, and guess what? System can't breathe, can't flush the toilet. So that's the reason why they increase the size of your vents and freeze where it snows. We don't get a whole lot of those down here. I can't remember the last time it snowed. I think it was 73. It snowed for about five minutes. That was 1873 for you, Mark. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> so, that's the reason why, you know, they actually have larger vents up north. In certain areas, you know, and it has to be a full vent too because if you bring a a four inch vent down and then you decrease it to two inch before you get to the first fixture, guess what happens? Then the snow just builds up right there <laughs> and you well. plugged it up again. So four inch vents, they will freeze up. Yeah. I've seen them freeze up, man. I'll tell you, it's crazy. So. Fittings, we talk about fittings. I give you some sheets there. Wow. Now, Oh my goodness. All of you got a little bit of common knowledge when it comes to your cell phones and computers and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, what you do is you pull your cell phone out. Because I'm not oh, your mother. And I'm not your dad. And you just go to your. Okay. Nibco. PVC. Fittings. And then hit search. And then you can just go right to the PVC fittings by Nipco. Everything you wanted to know about fittings is on that site. Trap adapters, female trap adapters, female flush trap adapters, male adapters, male flush adapters, male spigots. Soil pipe adapters. Soil pipe is cast iron, by the way. I don't know why they call it soil pipe, but they do. For instance, I got all your different elbows, everything. You can work your way down through it, and it tells you what they are, what they're called, rather than me having to explain everything to you. If you really want to do this, then you can take the time to look through it. If you see anything that says side inlet, don't bother with it, because it ain't gonna happen in Florida. They make them. Rules and codes. Just can't use them here. So everybody knows where that's at. Yeah. Now, Nibco not only makes PVC, they make uh, copper fittings. So you can also type in Nibco copper fittings, and it'll bring up all your different types of copper fittings: male, female adapters, bushings, reducers, bells, T's. Bull noses, all kinds of names for fun stuff. But if you don't learn this stuff, oh, go away, Nick. <laughs> it's a builder. What's going to happen is, is you're, you're going to be working with a plumber, and he's going to send you out the truck to get some fittings, and you're not going to know what you're looking for. And if you don't know what you're looking for, chances are you're not going to be working well. So if I send you out a truck to get a bucket of grout, you got a clue what you're going after? Yeah. Yeah. 
as you grow. Yeah. For Lisa. Yeah. If I sent you out to truck to get me a three inch bullnose tee, would you know what I was talking about? Hell no. <laughs> if I sent you outside to get me a two by inch and a half trap adapter, would you know what I'm talking about? But if you read that, if you look up on there and look up all your fittings, it'll explain to you what each fitting is. So, because there's, there's hundreds of them. Flip one of those papers over and write. I'll tell you what to write, okay? These are the most common fittings that we're going to talk about. We'll start out with drain fittings, all right? Now, the confusing part is, is plumbers have different lingo. Some call it one thing, some call it another. There's no unity. If you came from the old school, you called it by the right name. Quarterback. Quarterback is a 90 degree angle. So if I told you to go get me a 90 PVC, it would be a 90. But a quarterback is the same thing. But that's drain time. The difference between pressure and drain. Your next one will be an eighth bend. Eighth? Eighth. Plumbers nowadays want to call it 22 degrees. Don't ask me why. And we have a 45 degree. They just call it 45. Go get me a 45. Not a Colt 45. We're not talking about malt liquor, we're talking about fittings. <laughs> Couplings. Couplings are important because there's two different kinds. There's a threaded coupling and there's a regular coupling. So you need to make sure you ask when he asks for a coupling which one he wants. Female adapter. No, it doesn't mean you have to get used to your girlfriend. Female adapter is a piece of, could be a coupling with threads inside it, could be a 90 with threads inside it, but it's, that's a female adapter. It has inside threads, female. So if you flip it over and go the other way, it has a nipple with threads, it's called a male adapter. Because the male goes in the female, right? As perverted as it sounds, it's the truth. So if I say go get me a three-quarter inch male adapter, I mean a three-quarter inch nipple with threads on it. And the other end's glue joint. So male adapters, female adapters. Now, if he tells you, listen, go get me a, a two by three bushing. First thing you say is, what kind? Because there's two kinds. There's an inside bushing, and there's an outside bushing. If you're running sewer lines, you use an outside bushing. If you're running pressure lines, you use an inside bushing. Because an inside bushing will create a lip, which in a sewer line is not a good thing because things catch up on it. <laughs> You want smooth transitions on your pipe, so. Okay, so we got 90s, quarter bends, 45s, 22s. Now, go give me a street 45. What's a street 45? Test time. 45 has a hub on each end. A street fitting has a hub on one end and it's, it's glue joint on the other end. It fits inside a hub. So when you're looking up your fittings, look up street fittings. Because <coughs> you can glue a street fitting into a hub. So street fittings will be used on like a Y or a combo, or if you got a tight turn, on a water line, because street fittings come in drain fittings and <coughs> water fittings. 
CPVC, ABS, and CPVC. Street fittings come in copper. So, put a circle around street fittings. Because when you're, when you're looking on your phone, you want to you pay attention to street fittings. Okay, let's talk about a combo now. The difference between a combo and a Y is I'm going to explain to you why. What is that? That's what? a Y. Okay. One, two, three. Outlet, inlet, inlet. Now, any fitting that has that configuration, that's a Y. Water fittings don't come like that. Potable water fittings, there's no Ys. This is only drain, only drain fittings. Now, this one right here comes out, goes up, and then turns, comes back, goes down, like this, and this is one two, three. What's that called? That's a combo. Y combo. Now, this is where street fitting comes in. Let's say, for instance, you took a street fitting and you put that street 45 right here What did I just make? Combo. Combo. Made a combo. But if you're running a sewer line, it's easier to use a combo instead of using two fittings because this will cost half the price of what that would cost to put those two in. Yeah. So, but that's only for lateral lines. Now let's say for instance, take this off and your line went this way. You're coming into it from the side. That's why you use the Y. Now a Y, you can install on its side. You can install it vertical or you can even lay it on its back. So you can lay it on its back, to lay it to the side, and if you've got it on a side angle, it's going to pitch up a little bit because it's got to have a drain. Or you can go vertical. That's a Y. That's a sedimentary T. One, two, three. Sanitary T actually comes out pretty straight. I'll just put a little curve on it. Sanitary T can only be used in one application, that's vertical. It has to be upper. If it's vertical, the slope comes down. Or you can go and now it becomes a vent. It goes up. So 
get the vertical on your sanitary tee, which you have. Sanitary tea. Let me explain the reason for the sanitary tea. Then you'll understand. Okay. Here's our pipe. Right here. Here's the sanitary tea. Comes up. Goes like this. Comes down. Goes like this. Okay. One. Or only one. Two, three. All right. See how this curves? Over here, I got a sink. Come off of it. P trap. Drain line. Dump center there. Flow is down. Always remember, the flow is down. Okay. That's a short bend. That's why you can't lay that one down because it doesn't have enough sweep. That's why you have to use a combo, or you have to use a Y. Now, you can flip that over. You can tie a vent in. Take that vent up through the roof. You know why you can do that? Because the flow is down. Always remember the direction of the flow. Whether it be a vent, goes up, drain goes down. So if it rains, water comes down that vent, goes into here, goes out through the drain system. So you can that's the only two applications you can use the sanitary tea in. Is either for a vent or a drain. Can't lay it on its back, can't. Lay it sideways. You have to use Ys, 45s, or combos. Sanitary T is made only to go up and down, period. If you're draining into it from a sink, it goes down. If you're coming off a vent, it goes up. The round part needs to go up if you're going off a vent. So it has a smooth, same here. It has a smooth drop. Get it? Because if you put a sanitary tee in underground on its back, you're going to fail. And the plumbing inspector is going to call you and go, hey, dumbass. Yeah. Ain't a, a third grade plumber out there that knows you can't put a sanitary tee except in one position. So remember that always. Always. It's on the test. <laughs> on the test. Sanitary key can be installed which way? Huh? Vertical. That's it. Vertical. Drain goes down, vent goes up. So we can install it. Two kind of 90s. Let's say we got a T here, goes over, catches the sink, right here. Water comes down, you get to the bottom of the slab, that's your vent. Right here, you're going to put a 90 on it. And you're going to go out of the building or to your next fitting. Three kind of 90s, guys. Short 90, regular 90, and a long sweep. Anything that's at the base has to be a long sweep. You can do that by two 45s. Use a 45 with a street 45 and make a sweep, or you just get the fitting, which is cheaper. <laughs> I have a lot of plumbers that'll they buy a thousand forty-fives in this lake. 
dude, you know, 190 sweep costs three bucks, 245 is five dollars. When you're using 20 of them, that adds up to a lot of money. So, <clears throat> short 90. What can you use that for? Okay, see our pipe here? I'm going to bring it down to here. We're continuing up to the roof. Well, let's say the vent's over here. We got to get to that vent. You put a short 90, short 90, and you can go out. You know why? Because nothing's draining through it except rainwater. So that's permissible. You can use a short 90 out of vent system, but you can't use it once you get past the slab on the drain system. You can use it to make a turn in a wall. 90s can go vertical or horizontal. Now, remember how everything goes downhill for the drain. Well, if it's a vent, it goes uphill. You know the reason why vents always go up? So they can drain down. Because if your vent went down, let's say this was your vent, you came over and you went down like this and then back up, you just created a trap. And guess what? It's going to airlock and you're not going to be able to flush the toilet in the house. So everything goes up for the vent, and for the drain, everything goes down. Get it? Up and down, man. It's real simple. Because if you have a vent line that has fall, comes back this way, and it rains and it fills up, you just blocked up your vent system, and your toilet's ain't going to flush. It ain't going to happen. Maybe you start pushing it, you'll be augering it, you'll be getting mad, going, man, what the hell? If you can't breathe, it ain't going to flush. If you can't breathe, can you drink water? Exactly. Try taking a drink of water and don't breathe. Just swallow it and don't breathe afterwards. And after you get through coughing up half your lungs because it went down the wrong hole, you'll understand why. <laughs> Got to have air to move. Let's take a break. It's very easy to get heat stroke in this weather. Had it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get a heat stroke very many times, and you're pretty much going to be a vegetable because your brain literally fries. You know, that's why you have to stay well hydrated. You have to drink plenty of water. You know, no matter who you're working with, if you get to a position to where you're feeling it, and you know how to tell when the heat stroke's coming on. Mm -hmm. Don't soft spot. Lightheaded. No, there's more to it now. A lot of people just get lightheaded just for the simple fact is they don't have any brains. But, yeah. <laughs> Quit sweating. If you stop sweating, start worrying. When the body doesn't sweat, it's because it's no longer releasing fluids and you're fixing to overheat. And that's where heat stroke comes from. That's where these kids on the football field have heat strokes. So, what's the best way to sweat? Drink lots of water. Not Gatorade. I'm not, you know, decommercializing Gatorade, but it has electrolytes in it. Electrolytes don't act well in the heat, regardless of what Michael Jordan says. So drink a lot of water, a lot of water, 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 water. If you go out on a job site and they don't have water, you make sure somebody gets it. You know, my guys don't leave the shop unless they have water in the trucks. So our number one thing on landscaping. Oh yeah, dude, it's you know it's dangerous, man. I mean, your body, your organs shut down, your liver stops, kidneys don't produce, you know, and then your brain swells up, and you're pretty much a vegetable. So, safety is very important in this heat. Yesterday's feels like temperature was 113 degrees. It's insane, and we were out in it all day. And I had one of my guys that got start to go down. I made him go inside and sit down. You know, it's dangerous. You know, safety is the number one concern. If you if you don't feel safe, you know, then don't do it.
want to do it. So, so what do you do now for a living? I'm doing caregiving. You're taking care of people like Mark? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my job. Do you, do you work in a home? or? No, I do agency work. Oh, you do through an agency? Yeah. Okay. So, why'd you take this class? I want to better myself and uh, do something where I can get